Hello and welcome to Big Easy TV's A Brief History of Whiskey with me, Jamie Fraser. In this series, we'll walk you through the past and guide you to the present. In this episode, we'll cover a quick history of production and take you through a few Irish whiskies. We'll then make a comparison to an Australian alternative and we'll take questions of the week in the comments. Uh, we'll decide what the best question is and we'll send out some vouchers next week. Okay, so there's evidence of people in North Africa using fairly primitive distilling equipment uh, like clay pots, etc. from around 700 BC. In all likelihood, what they were making was only for external use. Fast forward from there to the time of the Crusades and it's widely believed that the clergy on tour brought back some distillation methods that were being used by North African alchemists. At the time, they were more than likely only making alcohol for medicinal purposes. These methods were then spread all, all over Europe and uh, monasteries everywhere started to produce the water of life or akavit. In Ireland, in Gaelic, this is pronounced Ushkibaha. Not too hard to see how it translated back into English that became whiskey. Ushki, whiskey. Right, let's get into some whiskey. This lovely little fellow is uh, Writer's Tears Copper Pot Irish Whiskey. It's a pretty good example of a classic Irish style being 60% malt and 40% grain, unpeated and of course triple distilled. Irish whiskey saw a major golden age in the early 1900s due to it being softer and more approachable than many of its Scottish cousins. So you want to swirl the glass, nice big swirl, get it right in there, leaving your mouth slightly open. Now, you don't want to jam it right in, up your nose because you're going to burn some, some receptors up there, so holding the glass slightly away from your face. Now, there's no right or wrong here, but I'll tell you what I'm getting and try and keep it simple. There's green apple and vanilla and honey. It's pretty simple stuff. Now, onto the palate. Try and hold the whiskey in your mouth for at least eight seconds swirling around, rolling the liquid around your tongue and mouth before you swallow it down. Now again, uh, it's all personal perception. There's no real right or wrong. Um, what I'm getting is a lot of spice, predominantly kind of hot ginger, leading on to butterscotch and toasted oak. And that's finishing nicely with some chocolate, some milk chocolate and almond. Delicious. Uh, moving on to our next whiskey is Connemara Peated Single Malt Irish Whiskey. Now this is more of a sort of uh, throwback style, believed to be more of what is a traditional method of grain drying, using peat as the fuel source, which imparts smoky and medicinal aromas and flavors to the finished product. Now on the nose, smoked straight away, carried by sort of honeyed fruit, maybe pears, and it's quite sweet as well. Onto the palate. Mm, that honey and pear, far more predominant on the palate followed by an earthy peatiness. Now when people talk about peat on the palate, it's generally an earthiness that they're referring to, as opposed to smoke on the nose. It finishes fairly mild, like slowly turning the volume down on your tongue. Amazing. Now, both of the previous whiskies have been aged in American ex-bourbon casks. This mainly became a trend due to the price and accessibility of these single-use casks. Uh, now, what I mean by that is the bourbon industry only allows a new oak cask to be used once, and we can only assume that it was created to support the lumber trade. This fellow, however, is aged in more traditional European X sherry cask, and this is the Red Breast Single Pot Irish Whiskey. So let's get it up to the nose. Mm. 
zesty citrus, cut hair, guava maybe, beeswax, and definitely a little mustiness from that sherry cask. Time for a taste. Oh, yeah, stewed fruits, definitely a bit of uh, caramelized banana, some orange and nutmeg. Mm. Yeah, those familiar butterscotch and caramel flavors coming through as well, finishing on a bit lighter vanilla, like sort of custard or creme brulee. Maybe a little bit of menthol as well. All right, now I have forgotten to give myself an extra glass for our uh, Australian whiskey comparison. Declan, if you wouldn't mind just grabbing me a Glencairn from there, please. All right, so now we're going to look at how an Australian whiskey stands up against a classic style Irish whiskey. So I'm going to choose something that is made in a traditional Irish method, and that is going to be today Dobson's Old Reliable from New South Wales. So yep, uh, triple distilled, and it's grain and malt as well. So it's made in this tradition of an Irish blend. Uh, now it, it is very lightly peated, I believe with Scottish malt. Finished in French oak casks that previously held Shiraz as well as Madeira. Uh, it's very similar in colour to the Writer's Tears. Medium amber. Frail sense of cream soda and custard and a bit of strange sort of baked pineapple or barbecued pineapple onto the palate oh, quite delicate but uh, yeah definitely strong vanilla that cream soda flavor is really coming through sort of uh, Fruity chocolate, a little bit of gentle cinnamon perhaps, and some white pepper too. Turns a little drier towards the finish, but yeah, in short, a fantastic alternative to traditional Irish whiskey, and made right here in Australia. Cheers. All right, so we're going to talk. Uh, I guess this is the sports section. Um, We'll be uh, next week reading out questions from the comments of this week and we're going to decide what the best or the most fun question is. The winner will be announced on next week's episode and we'll send out a voucher which will be redeemable online. So get typing and good luck. Now over to Tom Hector with the weather. G'day guys, thanks for tuning in. It's Tommy Hackers here with the bloody, bloody how you doing weather today. Now I thought I'd just uh, take you to the top of the bloody lookout here in Adelaide. Looking good, clear skies. A lot of bloody, bloody lot of, a lot of fresh air out there today. A lot of fresh air, a lot of virus keeping everybody in. Stay home and have a beer and be safe. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Tom. That was both informative and stimulating. Please join us again next week where I'll be discussing the whiskies of Scotland. Please check out the links in the bio for where to purchase sample packs and of course our famous fried chicken. Stay safe everybody and remember there's no such thing as bad whiskey. <laughs>